Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to be discussing a postpartum depression. So I want to just talk to you guys about how I recognized I was dealing with PPD and the things that helped me get through it or treatments, the treatments, the things that I did to help me overcome that. And so I just want to start off with a little bit of my story. Um, I, I believe I was actually previously dealing with a little bit of that even while I was pregnant just because of the previous traumatic um, event that I dealt with before um, my second child. And so I believe I dealt with a lot of fears with the, with the current child that I have. And so um, with that being on top of, you know, just the hormonal imbalances that I was dealing with, it was just like a double whammy. And so first I want to talk about how to identify PPD. So number one is you deal with hopelessness. I dealt with hopelessness for over a year, guys, and it just, like I said, it has a lot to do with your hormonal imbalances. And also, if you're breastfeeding, your body is continually going through um, changes because it's producing milk to nurse your baby. And so I found out that a person who's breastfeeding, you know, they, they deal with it maybe a little longer than others because of the production of milk. Now, this is in no way to um, discourage anybody who wants to breastfeed. You should do it and push to do it because it's it's good and it's it really gives you that bond. But back to the identification of PPD. Um, I dealt with hopelessness um, for like a little bit over a year and you just feel like you have no help, like you're drowning, like you can't breathe. And with that, you just, I don't know, you just, you almost lose your identity. Like your identity is gone because you, you wrap your, your life around your baby, you know, especially if you're, you're, you're a fresh, freshly new mother and you, you want to make sure your child has everything he or she needs and you, you just want to be there and, just be a part of that. And so you wrap your whole life around that. And you, at the same time, you you just kind of, you start to lose yourself. And that brings me to the second part is that how you identify is when you're crying, when you're constantly crying all the time. And that was something I did a lot as well. Like I cried, like Somebody can do something nice for me. And I cried uncontrollably. Now, a lot of times it was because, you know, I really appreciated whoever the person was that did the gesture. I was overwhelmed. But at the same time, postpartum was 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 influencing me to cry like uncontrollably. And I would say, you don't have to do that, this and that. And it was it was like I said, it was really influenced by PPD. And I just cried. I would cry in the morning, cry at night, and and I hated that. I just, I was like, I do not like this place I'm in. I knew right then and there that I was in a time of this unhealthy feeling. The third thing I want to talk about to how to identify PPD is isolation. I strongly dealt with this. Like, I just felt like I needed to protect my child, and I think I did that from just not wanting to do a lot of things, things that I would normally do. I constantly would um, just go different places, just get out. And I became, like my social life had really started to decline a whole lot. Like I would be like, oh, you can come over, but you know, I'm not, I don't want to go, you know, just for fear. Like I said, for fear of something happening to Anona, you know, my child. And so I would constantly make excuses of, you know, not to get out or to, you know, just shut down. And um, I recognize that. So be sure to recognize that. And the fourth thing I want to talk about how to identify PPD is um, low energy. Guys, I never had energy. Like I would 
always be tired. I just felt like lounging all day. There would be times like I knew that I had to wash clothes, cook, wash dishes. Just I always had something to do. And I'm a blogger and so I was like, I need to be, you know, just writing my blogs. I need to be doing this, doing that. I always had something to do, but it was just like, I don't have the energy. Like, I would literally be dog tired. And I would even do different things. I would like, you know, make energy smoothies and just try different things to, you know, boost my energy up. But none of that stuff helped. It just it just felt like I was, my, my energy just always declined all the time even after maybe a night of a good of good rest i still just felt tired all the time and the next thing i want to talk about to how to identify ppd is insomnia i never slept like even when my my daughter started sleeping like for eight hours straight like I just I couldn't sleep and I felt like my body was in shock like after a year's worth of not sleeping my body is just like okay what are you doing like what are you doing and so it would be really really hard for me to go to sleep and I would just sit and stare at the ceiling and I would even try to do things to help me go to sleep but it was just, it was a struggle. And so um, the next thing I want to discuss is separation anxiety. Oh my God, this was a huge one for me, especially with breastfeeding. It's like, I was like, I, all, I have to keep her with me. Like I don't, I want her near me so that I know everything that's going on with her. I want to, I want to know that and I feel like at that same time I was causing myself to be unhealthy because of that. Like I always wanted her with me. I didn't I didn't like the thought of her being with anybody else. It doesn't matter who who the person was. Like I just didn't like the thought of not knowing what she was doing in that very instance. And guys, it was just it was really really hard for me and I had to come to grips that look you have to do what's best because if you don't do what's best you become really unhealthy for you and the baby but oh my goodness separation anxiety was the I think the most hardest for me because I was like I've never been away from her this amount of time and what if this is happening and what if that's happening and I just guys I'm a thinker and I overthink things and that's something I've always done and I understand that that's something I really need to control and I, I believe that's just associated with anxiety like you want to make sure things are right and you want to control the situation but you can't all the time and so you have to just leave things and let you know let them work themselves out you have to just know that things are going to be okay and so after I've dealt with all that, um, I don't know, like I, I literally felt heavy, like this burden of heaviness. Like again, guys, I've dealt with that for a whole year and I just, I don't know, I, I just suffered. You know, a lot of times us moms, we, we suffer in silence and we just, we just roll with the punches and we do it, you know, because of our children and because of our spouses or just because, you know, we feel like that's the right things the right thing to do. And so um I want to talk about how to treat PPD. And for those of you who don't like to take medicine, these are just some of the things that I felt that really helped me um with PPD. Um, like I said, again, there are medicines that you can take, but my body never, never, you know, cooperates with the medicine. So um, the first thing I want to talk about with how to get treatment is to get some me time. 
me time is so important it's extremely important i cannot stress that enough i started working out i started um just having like going out on dates with my with my girlfriends and um just doing things like dating my husband again actually you know and those things are so important to do. Like you have to have me time. Whatever your me time is consisted of, you need that time away from your baby because you need to be healthy. And so um, the second thing I wanna talk about the treatment for PPD is support. Support, support, support. You want to make sure you have a good support team, um, whether it be friends, family, People that you really, really trust and you know, you know that if you go somewhere, you don't have to worry about this or that happening to your baby. Like if you know that, okay, I can, tr I can really trust this person. I know that they're gonna, they're gonna give my child their full attention while I'm not around. And so you need that. You need that that time away. You need, you just need people to support. People that are gonna step in and help you, even if you just need them to be there to talk. Like you need that support. People who are going to be praying for you. People are going to be, like I said, there that you can confide in. And um, as for me, I I thank God for my husband because he has been a a tremendous support and my and my family and friends. Um, I really appreciate you know all of them who have played a huge part in my um my support team. Um, I don't know how in the world. I would have done it without them and God first and foremost like like he's y'all I don't know what I would have done but thank God these things are really vital guys for you to um, make sure you you have because you can't do it all you're one person you need a break you you just simply can't do it all and you have to be okay with you not being able to do it all you know and so um we are all helper, helpers one to another. And so that's something that I've learned. And I've just learned over the years is that, you know, you just, you, you can't live life in fear. You can't live life, um, just live life in shambles or just feeling like you have to do life alone. So that's why it's important to identify it and do something about it because a year worth of uh, a year's worth of PPD it's a burden it's it's heaviness it's it's I don't know it's just it's a lot you don't have peace or anything like you're just going through the motion you're you're like a, a zombie when you're just dealing with it and so I urge you I encourage you to really do a number of the things that I shared with you that were treatments for me you know, go seek counsel, talk to somebody, get some help, get some support. Um, and let people help who really want to help you. Because there are people that wanted to help and I would reject. I would reject and make excuses and, you know, just wanted to do it, just do it by myself. But again, you can't do it by yourself. You just can't, like... We can't do life alone. Life is not made for us to do it alone. And so um, I'm just encouraging you to do what's necessary for your mental health. Because your baby needs you. Your family needs you. Your friends need you. Your spouse needs you. Yep. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that... In this video that you got some clarity on something and it really helped you with something and so again for those of you who are new be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe